So we've been um, doing our mantra, reflecting on the divine um, in its, its manifest form. And so pain or unpleasant experience is part of that. And the mantra that we're chanting draws upon lots of different aspects and concepts and invites us to reflect upon their, their energetic source. So let's chant today the, the first three. So um, buddhi, the intellect, nidra, quality of tiredness, and shuddha, shuddha, desire. If you're comfortable to you close your eyes, in together with a single arm, inhale. Oh. Ya Devi Savabhutation, Ya Devi Savabhutation, Uri Repain a Samstita. Uri repain a sunstita. Namastasye, 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 namo namaha. Ya devi savabhuteshu. Ya devi savabhuteshu. Nidra pain a sunstita. Nidra pain a sunstita. Namastasye, 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 namo namaha. Ya Devi Savabhuteshu, Ya Devi Savabhuteshu. Shudra Pena Samstita, Shudra Pena Samstita. Namastasye, 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 namo namaha. Just resting in being, noticing whatever it is that arises, can you just observe its energetic essence? Some of the other Sanskrit terms that come up, the next one's chaya, the shadow. So chaya are all the things that we would prefer not to know about ourselves. Our negative qualities. And we just see these as a source of energy, a very valuable source of energy. Shakti, the primal energetic essence as we move from Knowing our oneness, that first divide is the Shiva and the Shakti. Shakti gives rise energetically to everything. Krishna first. Shanti, forgiveness. Matri is another one we've um, come uh, use so matri is, is the actually it's like mother nature it is everything contained within mother nature that's been born of the shakti So when you're ready, let's um, open your eyes and we'll come down into sideline. Start with some nice, gentle. So 
top hand sliding along the bottom hand, initially putting the focus on the reach forward. Reach forward and retract. And then slowly as you begin to loosen up, just stroking that little bit higher up the arm, coming into a little bit more thoracic turn. And then finally sliding that hand all the way up to the same side shoulder and gently circling the shoulder. So you can circle upright if you like or come into a little bit of a twist. Really trying to turn that upper side of the chest to face the sky. Nice and gently feeling the whole of the shoulder girdle turning. Okay, and then coming back into the shoulder upright position, leave that hand on the shoulder for a moment, elbow in by your side. So we're keeping the shoulder and the chest opening, but we're gonna bring the arm up and overhead. So the elbow and hand are a little bit in front of the body. Nice and slowly, if anyone wants to work more strongly, of course, you can take some weight. This grip weighs about a kilo. A kilo is quite a lot for the rotator cuff to hold there. So you don't need very much weight. And you can feel this is our arm position in a few of our standing poses in the warrior one in the Pajvakanasana. So you feel the chest is nice and open. You can even turn the head to look up to the arm quite easily. Okay, lovely. So coming down and let's change sides. <coughs> Okay, so starting nice and gently with our little reach and retract action, starting little small amounts of movement, just stroking the hand to the forearm. And then gradually making the movement bigger, a little bit of thoracic turning, contributing to the opening. But really don't lose the reach, keep reaching forward as well, because that's a very valuable movement to open the upper back. And then when you next come up, bring the hand up to the shoulder and gently opening, rotating the whole of that shoulder girdle.
Okay, and again, coming back into the upright position. So you feel that shoulder and chest nice and open now. Keep that openness and we bring the arm up and overhead with or without the weight as you prefer. Seeing that the elbow and hand are a little bit in front of the body. You can see it in your peripheral vision at least. Maybe you can turn your head and look up to the arm. Okay, lovely. So put your weight down and roll back onto your back. Onto your back. Now, if you've got two weights, then you might like to use the weights. And we'll bring the hands up and we'll lower the arms out to the side into the cactus arm position. If you don't have weights, you can also do it with the bolster. You know, we've done this push up with the bolster before. It's not quite the same thing. And you can, of course, do it without weights. Whatever you're doing, the focus is on control. Okay, and then put down your weight, take your arms wide to the side and gently, as far as you're comfortable, dropping the knees side to side, head turning the opposite direction. And when you're even side to side, relax, come back to the center and hug the knees to the chest. And relaxing again. Okay, let's just give the legs a little stretch out. So maybe one leg at a time, inhaling up, exhaling down, just alternating sides, stretching out through the back of the leg. Maybe circling the ankle, pumping the ankle. 
giving the sciatic nerve a gentle hug. And again, when you're even side to side, roll to side and come up and we'll come over to hands and knees. Strong, strong arms, hands pressing down into the floor, gently cat cow. So we've got that lovely reach and retract action again. And come into a straight back position, arms nice and strong, gently press out into one heel at a time. Stay with that, or if you like, have a little press out and down face dog. Okay, so from down face dog or hands and knees, look between the hands, swing the right leg through. And nice and gently lunge and lengthen, loosen the hips, hamstrings. Okay, for a moment, stay in the lunged forward position and try to stay into the lunge, but create the little bit of a cat cow action through the spine. Just getting a little bit more focus on the femoral nerve, arching and rounding the back. Okay, 
Okay, lovely. Let's step back, change sides. Lunge and lengthen. Stay forward now in the lunge and gently try and get that rounding and arching of the back. Okay, lovely. And then when you're ready, step back, back to hands and knees or back to down face dog. Stay there, using the breath to bring softness. So just relaxing into the position as much as possible. And then lower the knees to the floor, take rest in child pose. If you prefer, you can lie on your belly. Come up for a moment into kneeling. If you need a little cushioning under the knees, take it. So we're just going to lower down towards the heels from kneeling. Okay, now you need not get all the way down, some of you might, but I want you to be more interested in how you get there. Are you symmetrical? through the hips, are you symmetrical through the knees? Might like to just keep your hands in the groin there, feel what's happening. I can actually feel my hip flexors engaging there. Have to think about that one to figure out why. But so the slower you do it, nice and slowly, I want you to feel your thighs. Actually, it'll be the, um, the rectus femoris contracting there. So it's that slow descent, the thighs really control that slow descent of the pelvis.
way. And then next time you come up, step the right foot out to the side, come into our Parigasan. So face the foot forward, the foot's in the same line as the knee and facing forward. And we'll start just by loosening into the waist and the inner thigh, just gliding up and down that leg. Okay, let's stay in that position for a minute. Nice sustained stretch, the inner thigh. Bring the left hand to the shoulder and just try and rotate that shoulder back. So we've, we've got this outer thigh kind of sinking down, left shoulder drawing back. Karen, if it's easier, you just keep your hand on the hip. That feels too closing for you. I want for you, the focus is on lifting the rib cage up, not dropping down. Well, for all of us, really, you want that lift up and over. We're creating space. Okay, now come up, keep that leg where it is, and take the hand, other hand down to the floor. Now keep the groin coming forward. And then bring the right hand to the shoulder, open the right side of the chest. And here we are back with our Parigasan arm. So perhaps move in and out of it. Or if you like, reach out and sustain the position. and then inhale, find your way up some way. And then we're going to come back down into Parigasana, this version of Parigasana, now with the arm up and overhead. Karen, probably I'd, I'd leave the arm out of it for you. Maybe you can stretch up rather than drop over. So many variations here because it opens so many areas of the body. You know, we can focus on the shoulder, we can focus on the side, Focus on the leg. And then strong up you come, change sides. Left foot out to the side, toes facing the front, and just starting with a nice gentle tip, focusing on the leg and the waist to begin. And then enjoying the sustained position, maybe then bringing the hand up to the shoulder to create or to remind of that opening, that the chest is opening in the opposite direction. And then inhale, come up. And then coming down, hand firm. And stretching through that upper side of the body.
much easier to come into this than to come out of it. There's no elegant way to come out of it. Okay, so keeping that left leg out and then we're coming into the fuller Parigasan. If you like, reach the arm overhead, perhaps reach the arm up to the sky, perhaps leave the arm out of it, your choice. Okay, let's inhale and come up. And come back down into side lie for a minute. So I want you in side lie with the body, the, the knees are bent to 90 degrees, but the body is completely in the long line of the mat. Okay, and we're gonna rest in on the sphinx arm. So just first of all, make sure, so the elbow, the hips, the knees, the spine are all in one single line. Okay, watch the tendency. Now, if it's a little bit, we're not going to be here too long, but if it's a little bit challenging for the hips, then you can just have cushion or blanket under the hips if they feel a little bit bony and sensitive. But basically, with this lovely flat face, and then we're going to take the top leg out and place the top leg on the floor, also still in line with the body. and then press the ground of knee into the floor and lift up. So we're lifting the pelvis off the floor and then again, bringing the arm overhead. So it's a version of side plank, an easy version, but well hard enough. Being down on the forearm makes it quite challenging. Two more breaths. And then release, relax. Okay, you get that nice little side bend again there as you're relaxing. And let's change sides. We're just taking a moment to see that the whole of the body is in the line of the mat, elbow, trunk, hips and knees. And then straightening out the top leg and pressing down through that top leg foot and the elbow to lift up. <clears throat> and reach the arm overhead. Nice relaxed breathing for about six breaths. <clears throat> And then lower down, turn over and stretch out in down face dog. Down face dog should feel super easy now. And then from down face dog, look between the hands, step, walk or jump the feet forward and come up to standing. Okay, and stand for a moment into Dasana, feet hip width apart and just relax, focus on the breath. Just doing whatever you need to to arrive in standing. 
Feeling down into the feet, feeling the action in the legs, the length in the spine. A lot of shoulder, a lot of trunk work there. So just feeling the energy flowing. And then gently with the breath, we'll inhale, raise the arms, inhale up, exhale down. Nice, gently floating. Continue with just the arms or if you like, Challenging the balance by raising the heels. Okay, next time you come down, step the feet along the long line of the mat, hands on the hips, gently figure eight the hips. Change the direction of the figure eight. Okay, and then turn the right foot out to 90, left toes in, heels in line. Just give attention to the front leg for a moment, have a little micro bend of that knee, feel those muscles switch on, and then try and keep the legs straight without locking the knee. So try and keep those thigh muscles switched on. Okay, right thumb to the groin, left hand to the shoulder, inhale, lengthen the spine, and exhale, gently slide down. So we're hinging at the hips, the spine's quite straight. Now keep that left shoulder drawing back and then bring the arm up in front of the body just a little. Classical trikonasan, gazing up to the hand or down to the floor. Drawing the legs up, you come, hands to the hips, feet to the front. Nice, relaxed breathing. Second side, left foot up to 90, right toes in. Just giving attention to that leg, little bend and straighten just to switch the muscles on. Left thumb to the groin, right hand to the shoulder. And for that lovely Diagonal, turning, twisting through the spine. Inhale, lift the chest and exhale, sliding down. And then reaching up with the arm, gazing up to the hand or down to the floor. Nice, relaxed breathing.
Okay, strong in the legs, push yourself back up. Hands to the hips, feet to the front. Nice relaxed breathing. Now we're going to go back to the first. So we're going to bring the arm into the Pajvakanasana arm position. So just remembering Pajvakanasana, the arms in front of the body, but we're keeping that chest nice and open. If it feels too strong, you can just return to the classic Uttrakanasana. Let's turn the right foot out to 90, left toes in. Okay, this time begin by taking the arms wide. Inhale and exhale, folding into classical Trikonasana. Now, bring the left hand down to the shoulder. Just check that that shoulder girdle is lifting. And then you can take the arm back up or sweep the arm overhead into Pajvakanasana. Okay, either way, you're gazing up to the hand or down to the floor. Feel how that shoulder girdle still lifting. That gives strength to the arm okay, and freedom to the neck, freedom to the spine generally. Okay, and then strong legs, push up. Hands to the hips, feet to the front. Inhale, arms high and wide. And exhale, tipping to the side, around the hip. Bring the hand to the shoulder for a moment. Just check that shoulder girdle's lifted. And then back up to classical trikonasana or arm overhead in Pajvakanasana. Drawing the legs, push up. Hands to the hips, feet to the front. Relax. Nice, relaxed breathing. And let's inhale up through the midline. Exhale, fold down through the midline. Hands to the floor if they don't reach. Take some bricks. You can bend your knees as much as you need. So ideally, you feel like you're coming forward from your tailbone. So if you've got long legs, try and sneak your feet a little wider apart. Even if you need to, you should, when the feet go wider, it should be easier to get down. But you can always take bricks. Keep the spine comfortable. When you're there, Nice, gentle glide of the pelvis side to side, further opening through the groin. And then coming back to the midline, walk the hands around to each foot. And if it's comfortable too, you can stay there. You can have a little sustained stretch out over each leg. Haven't moved to the second side, slowly now to the second side.
and then coming back to the midline and coming up to standing. Okay, step the feet together. And just relaxing back into Dasana. Nice, relaxed breathing, appreciating your balance on two legs. Okay, so we're going to come into Warrior Three. Um, some of you might like to just to stay with the back toes down so you can focus on the stability in the front leg. In it. The most challenging part is actually that initial lifting of the toes. Okay, I mean, if I was really strict with you all, there'd be absolutely no movement of that leg in the trans transition. So how strict do you want to be with yourself? Knee out, hip in, transition, and just see if you can control. So some of you, it's more important than others to keep that knee wide. So we're not going to particularly time, but just see how you're going. And if you want to lift the top leg high, take the arms into the full pose and feel free to do so. Okay, let's gracefully lower and change legs. Once again, be curious about your technique, your way of transitioning. We're going to do it once more each side. So when you're ready, changing back to the first side again and giving a little bit more attention if there is a weaker side. They might naturally not spend so much time on the weaker side, so you might want to do it three times on the weaker side. When you're happy with your efforts both sides, just have a little fold down through the midline into Uttanasana and relax.
Okie doke, strong legs up we come. And let's come down and lie over a bolster or a brick. So whatever, whatever opening serves you best. I've been enjoying the bolster in the low back. Okay, if you're taking your feet wide, consider maybe having some support under the knees as well. Just a little bit easier for the back and for the hips. And relaxing. Play with the different arm positions. Enjoy a little further stretch out through the shoulders. Also a little bit easier for the neck. So when you're ready, let's um, come off the props you're lying on and we'll move and place bolster under the hips to come into a nice gentle figure four. Okay, or if you prefer, you go to a wall, use the wall for support. Um, actually, I'll give the other option too. So figure four, if anyone wants to do flat pigeon, 
we're going to do figure four and then come straight to sitting. So if you prefer flat pigeons, fine. We change legs sometime soon. Okay, so when you're ready to close, just come into something symmetrical, knees to chest or down face dog or child, depending on where you are. And then we'll make our way up to sitting. And come into Tarasana. And in Taras, and we'll just have a nice little explore side to side, endeavouring to come forward from the tailbone.
Encounter any tightness, enjoy a sustained little fold forward. And if you feel fairly symmetrical, just fold down through the midline. Okay, inhale, come up, bring the right leg in front of the left. Particularly if you're quite flexible, really square up the knees. So that the knees are above the heels, the feet parallel, uh, shins parallel to the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen up through the spine and on the exhale, twisting, turning to the right side as far as you're comfortable. Gaze out over the back shoulder, focus on breath in the belly. Okay, let's inhale to center and fold forward. You might like to take the tail off the back edge of the bolster. And if you're coming forward far enough, support the head. Inhale, come up, change the cross of the legs, and to the second side we go. Raise that over the back shoulder, focus on breath in the belly.
and inhale back to centre, fold forward and relax. Okay, let's inhale, come up. And bring your feet together into Baba Kanasana. So as possible, feet as close into the groin as possible. And if you're like me, you may not fold forward very far. The hands by the side, those of you that can fold forward, relax down. Some of you do it beautifully. So feel it is a different opening compared to Tarasan. I like to use my hands behind either on a, a wall or, a, or the bolster there to push forward. Okay, once you get that little bit of momentum forward, then you can bring your hands forward, but just don't collapse in the middle. You want to keep the spine nice and long. Okay, come up, straighten the legs or bring the legs in front of you with the knees bent, hands back behind, little lift of the chest, just counter posing if you want, lift the pelvis as well, Chattisthapa even. And then come into any comfortable seated position, just finishing with a little bit of pranayama. comfortably spine long bring attention to the breath in your spine inhale pause exhale pause
exploring the space after the out breath. Feeling as though the breath is arising and returning to infinite spaciousness. And then letting go of the pranayama, remain in seated meditation or take rest in shavasana. So take your time to close your practice. Wherever you are, have a nice big yawny stretch out. As you come to sitting, sit comfortably, spine long. 
I'd like to join you closing the three arms, bring hands to your heart. Inhale. Oh. Um. to your hand. Namaste. Thanks, folks. Have a lovely, lovely day.